Hello Elizabeth, nice to meet you. Last year you have written this text about cognitive dissonance. Uh, can you explain the concept to us? Yes, yes. Well, well. In fact, it comes of it comes from uh, a kind of anxiety that I have when I see the magnitude of this crisis. In fact, I think that this summit, both the official and the civil society, should be focused on discuss and debate about how to stop to stop growth, how to degrowth how to go back and restore life and take care of life. Because we are really living one of the most huge global crises. There are many activists here that are saying that we are in a kind of collapse, a global collapse of natural resources, climate, that is still uh, fighting to, for survive, but it's a kind of global denialism of what is really going on. I don't want, of course, uh, diminish the big efforts that so many communities and movements and uh, youth and women initiatives are doing all over the world. There are so many. In where the, from where I come from, in Bolivia, we have still many, many, many rural communities, many communities even inside the cities that are trying to apply the living well concept. and. We are trying to struggle against uh, extractivism, against overconsumption. But globally, as civilization, we are not really doing the, uh, the right steps. The right, uh, we are not working in the correct direction to really, truly understand the linkages between how we do live and how our lives trapped by this capitalist system and this capitalist dream of overconsumption as a, a formula to be happy, a formula to thrive, is, has trapped us. So that's why I say that there is a, a cognitive dissonance between what it, we do and the effects of what we do, and also a cognitive dissonance of all of the all the formation that we are receiving from science, from activists, from different voices that are saying we have to stop, we have to stop, and in fact we know that we have to do that, but in our daily lives we just follow the routine that is very well planned for a system that is based on the overconsumption. That's that's the core of the article that I, I wrote. And there are some reasons for that, of course. One of them is the the very strong corporate system that is reigning over us and all the lobby that they have even done into the UNFCCC negotiations. You know, if you go there, you, you will see the fossil fuel corporations and all these denialism, denialism um, currents have been financed by the, the corporations. They paid uh, even scientific um, researchers to, to say, no, you are ex exaggerating this, um, this crisis. This is a um, como se dice? This is a kind of um, cyclical, a cyclic crisis, and we are going to solve it. But the situation is that all the decisions that have been made already in the in the agreement at the UN are leading us to get temperatures far than the two degrees that are already high, because now we are suffering the impacts, impacts of our increasing of just one degree. You can imagine how could be the world with two degrees, it would be bad, but we are farther than two degrees. We are going to have probably in the next 30 years about two and three degrees and to the end of the century between four and six degrees. That is collapse. That's, that's we have something we have to understand. So. We have really, really to put aside the, the concept of development, the goal of development, even, uh, even if this is sustainable development. Sustainable was a, a nice word added to the plan. And we've, we, we continue it. 
um, over consuming our natural resources and even our lives, our health. So why has change not begun? Because this debate is a long one, it's a very old one debate. Many scientists, activists, thinkers have been saying almost the same things that activists are saying now about half a cycle, uh, a century, about half a century ago. You have Illich, you have um, uh, so many others that were really rethinking and the, the Club of Rome and many others that they, they say we have to stop growing, we have to stop um, eating our natural resources. There is no, uh, we have to respect the limits, no? But why didn't we didn't stop? Why we didn't did it? I think that we have to do so many efforts. It's it's like like being in a in a wheel, and you have to stop it. And that is only possible, I believe, with two key issues. One of them is recognize ourselves as vulnerable persons. We as person and as civilization believe that we are for the eternity and we have so much power that we can transform everything, we can change everything and we can control everything. And we account with the support of technology and money. That's the, the paradigm of growing. So we have to recognize ourselves vulnerables and we have to recognize ourselves that we are not going to solve it that easy. We have to get, to get into the crisis as part of the solution. I don't like the word solution, of course. I, I really I don't think it helps to, to really dimension this, this crisis, no? But I think that uh, something that we have really uh, begin to change is our own way of of mind, of thinking, because the way of thinking, the way of behave is feeding the system. So we have to recognize those mechanisms and probably deconstruct ourselves to reconstruct a new, new civilization more based in empathy, conviviality, love, affection, ties, because, and especially in this summit in France, uh, after the terrorist attacks, the, the, the pattern of response is changing. It has been changing from some, some years ago, and, but now it's really changing, and it's changing into a very military said focus, you know. The way to face climate change, for many, is control borders, control of territories, do it by militarism, and do it uh, through security, uh, security measures. It's a, it's a pattern that is growing all over the world. So we have to do the contrary. We have to really establish cultures of peace between us and with nature to recover the balance. Recover the balance sometimes became a, a kind of empty word. It happened in our society in Bolivia. So. We talk about living well and mother air rights, and indeed we do not apply it. What, what, what do we have to do? How can we apply this? How can we make people again feel more love and empathy and uh, really choose the right alternatives to live on? To put in practice, we have to put in practice what is what we say. We are too used to build very interesting narratives, and I, I contributed to it too, but Sometimes we don't connect that narratives of changing to our personal lives. And here you can, be, you can see very inspirational examples, many inspira inspirational examples of people that is trying to, to do the, 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 the step ahead, the step ahead. And I think that's something that was in an absence in all this process is that we do not put ourselves, our subjectivity, our values, our daily behave into the formula. We just say, this is the plan, even as activists, this is the plan, we, we're going to change, we're going to resist, we're going to struggle, we're going to fight. But we don't put ourselves 
And in that sense, it's really, truly very important to face which role is playing patriarchy. Because capitalism is a very strong system because it has ensembled, ensembled? Uh, put together ancient systems of, of um, uh, exploitation and domination, like patriarchy, like colonization, like racism. All of them get together to build capitalism. Capitalism is a very strong and resilient because of that reason. So we, we have to de deconstruct it. And it's a very, very hard task because it's so strong, this system, that has the ability to even feed and eat even our own discourses. Mother Earth, you can see Mother Earth in the corporation's propaganda. Living well, you can see it there. Um, transformation, <laughs> also you can hear that from the powerful people that really doesn't want to transform because to transform is leave the power. Leave the sense of control everything. We have to leave that. And facing climate change, trying to control through geoengineering, through these huge uh, alternative energies but captured by corporations is also not a, a way to, to, to go, away, go away or find the way, find the way to, to leave this model. So I think this, it needs a civilizatory shift. We have to think that this is a civilizatory shift, what we need, and we have to put our subjectivity, our way of life inside the formula.